Finding that person you can spend your life with is an amazing and special experience. But I know for so many people how difficult and frustrating it can be to try to identify who is for you and who is not. To ensure that you end up with the right person and not trapped into the wrong, toxic, unhealthy relationship. So I'm here to help you out. I'm going to lay out the three keys to identifying your soulmate. My name is Stefan Laboussier, AKA Stefan Speaks. Back with another dating and relationship advice video. Today is relationship advice for men and women. And like I said, we're gonna be talking about the three keys to identifying your soulmate. Now, as always, be sure to like this video, share it, subscribe to this channel, and comment below. What do you think is a sign to identifying your soulmate? Now, real quick, if you're noticing a different ambiance, I'm in a different city for a little while, just work with me, but I'll be back to my normal setup very soon. But anyways, let's get to the topic. Three keys to identifying your soulmate. Now, let's first start with discussing the whole concept of a soulmate. Now, let me make something very clear. I do not believe in soulmates in the sense that no matter what you do in life, you're going to end up with this person. There are people out there who think what is for you is for you, and there's no way to mess that up. And I highly disagree. We all have free will. We have choices to make, and those choices can pull us onto the wrong path. It can pull us away from the right relationships. It can even pull us away from our true purpose. So we have to take personal accountability and understanding the preparation necessary and the, the decisions we're going to have to make in life to ensure we get what God has for us, including that soulmate. But here's what I do believe is a soulmate. I believe the soulmate is the person God knows who is best for you. At the end of the day, you're going to meet a lot of people. You're going to like a lot of people. You might have chemistry with a lot of people. Hell, you might love a lot of people. But not all of them are you going to have a true connection with. Not all of them can possibly be your soulmate because not all of them are truly best for you. Some of them may look good on paper, but spiritually there is something that is not in proper alignment there. And that's the key here. When we're talking about soulmates, we're going to a spiritual level with this. It's not just how it looks on the surface. It's that deeper thing going, that's going on. It's that recognition that we are our match. We are the two people who fit together to now achieve an even greater purpose together. And God knows who is best and who is not. Who can derail that purpose and who can uplift and strengthen you in that path. So this is where I believe the soulmate comes into play, all right? So now with that out the way, let's get into how do we identify these soulmates. Number one, or key number one to identifying your soulmate, you'll be able to be yourself with them and they will love you for who you are. So here's the reality, the unfortunate reality. A lot of people are dating with their representative. A lot of people are entering into relationships with their representative. And you're sitting here claiming you love them, there's a connection, but who the hell are they connecting to? Who the hell do they love? It's your fake you. It, it isn't the real person. And the reality is that when your true self comes out, that individual may not like what they see anymore. And that is more than enough evidence to say they are not your soulmate because the reality is that the person who is truly for you will love who you are at your core. But it's your responsibility to show that person from the jump. We don't wait till we meet a person that we think it's safe to be ourselves around. No, we be ourselves with confidence and we see who embraces that and who doesn't, which makes life easier in the sense of weeding out who is truly for us and who is not. So you want to walk in your authentic self from day one. You want to at least work towards that. Whatever fears or hangups that you have about being who you really are, let's conquer them. Let's face those issues. Let's heal because we need that to open the door to you being who you were created to be. And know that in that, you will now start to not only attract your soulmate and be able to receive them, but other opportunities. Your purpose can now flourish because you are walking in your true self. It's the truth that will set you free. So if you're living a fake life, if you're being a fake you, then you are not free. You are in bondage. And I'm trying to set you free from that bondage or at least assist you in that process. But getting back to the main topic at hand, identifying your soulmate, you will be able to be yourself 
and they will love that. And that's the thing, because understand that, again, if you're carrying your own hangups into a relationship and you're saying, well, I can't be myself around them, let's identify, is that because you're struggling on your own or because they are rejecting the parts of you that you have shown them? If it's about them rejecting when you do try to show yourself, then clearly they're not for you. But if it's about you being fearful of letting your true self out, be sure you conquer those fears because that's important. And again, not just for the sake of relationships, but for your own quality of life. So again, your soulmate will love who you are. You will be able to be yourself with them. Key number two to identifying your soulmate. And I'm going to break this down into two parts. For the men, you will feel peace in her presence. For the women, you will feel safety and security in his presence. So let's start with the men. I have spoken to tons of men who have said with confidence they know they have met the woman or they're with the woman that they have a connection with that they feel is their soulmate. And one of the, the common denominators I have found in all of these situations is that they feel peace around this woman. It's not even about what she's specifically doing. Just hearing her voice can give him peace. Just her coming around him can give him peace. And so again, it's something that's occurring at the spiritual level. It's not about what's happening on the surface. A lot of people can be nice and sweet, but that doesn't mean you feel peace around them. You can still feel funny, weird, or just not just not kind of neutral around certain individuals despite how nice they are to you. But feeling that aura of peace is a huge sign. This is your soulmate. There is a connection there. For the women, same thing, but it's about security and safety. You feel safe with this man. You feel safe in his presence. Again, doesn't mean he's perfect, doesn't mean he gets everything right, but something about his spirit speaks to you in a way that you feel at ease when you are with him, all right? And it becomes easier to be vulnerable with him. But notice I said the word easier, and that goes for the men. You find it easier to be vulnerable with this woman. But let me help you guys understand a mistake a lot of people make. So let's just say as a woman, you meet this man, and when you're in his presence, when you're talking to him, you feel that safety, you feel that ease, you feel like you can be vulnerable. But then let's say when you get off that conversation or when you go back to your house after meeting up with him, you start getting in your head about, is this real? Can I trust this? Your fears and your, your logic and your analyzation starts to creep in and now fear and confusion starts to consume you. Understand that that fear and confusion it is attached to your projection of negativity onto the situation. It is attacked, attached to unhealed parts in you. It is not attached to that man's spirit and how you feel around him. Don't confuse the two. Because I've heard people say things like, well, God is not the author of confusion. So because I feel confused in this situation, this must not be the man for me. But your confusion is not coming from God. It is coming from your fears. It is coming from your own heart, your own mind, trying to understand what's going on rather than leaning on God's understanding of the situation. And I'm going to shed a little bit more light on that in key number three. But the point is, do not confuse those two things. Do not confuse outside noise with how you feel with the individual. Same thing with the men. If, if you're feeling this peace around her, but then you go talk to your homeboys and they're like, man, you sure you could trust her? You sure this is it? You were wrong the last time. They start pouring that negativity and now you start becoming fearful and anxious and guarded. Again, don't put that on her because she did not make you feel that way. Your fears did. Your homeboys did. Your projected negativity did. This is where a lot of people get it wrong. Keep it separate and really evaluate how do I feel when I am with this person? How do I feel when I talk to this person? Is this the person I can openly communicate with? Because if they're doing everything, or it's, again, it's not even about what they're doing. If you're feeling that spiritually in their presence, then you've got to keep your focus on that and not all the outside noise that tends to contaminate a lot of these situations. Now, key number Three. And before I give you key number three, I want to give 
uh, book for the men and the women to read. For the women, get your copy of The Man God Has For You. You can go to www.themangodhasforyou.com. I put the link in the description and the comment section. It will give you the seven traits to help you determine your life partner. So it will expound on a lot of things we're talking about now and give you some extra bonus things to consider. For the men, he who finds a wife, same thing. Link in the description and the comment section. It will help you in receiving the woman that is truly for you. Now, let's move on to key number three. Key number three is you will receive godly confirmation. Now, hear me clearly, all right? So let me just get this out the way right now. When I say godly confirmation, I do not want you thinking I'm going to get a sign from heaven that says this is the one. And the only reason why I'm saying that to you is because there's a saying I have where I tell people, be careful looking for signs because the devil can throw up billboards too. A lot of people rest their determination of a situation or how they're going to figure out what's going on here based off of signs, not considering the fact that a sign is something that you're going to have to interpret and you can easily interpret it wrong. I can show you situations where a quote unquote sign occurred and you asked one group of people what this meant, another group of people what it meant, and they came up with two, three, four different answers. So that means it is possible to interpret it in different ways. So when I speak of godly confirmation, I don't mean signs. I don't mean random occurrences. I mean you going to God in prayer, asking God if this is the one and you receiving the answer within your spirit. Now, I know that can be difficult for some of y'all to grasp. If you have not become comfortable with hearing God in prayer, that's a hard thing to, to accept. However, I would encourage you to practice, not just when it comes to relationships, in life in general, talking to God in prayer, trying to hear what you, what you receive in your spirit. And if you're struggling to hear, considering fasting. If you follow me for a long time and you know I'm big on fasting, and fasting does help you draw closer to God and gain, and gain greater clarity on the situation. So that's a way to really try to get an answer. But that's what I mean by godly confirmation. And here's another reason why this godly confirmation is so important. When I sit down and I've coached people who have been divorced, men and women, <clears throat> and I ask them, did you ask God if you should marry this person? 90% say no. The other 10% say, I asked God, he told me no, and I married them anyway. It shows a clear pattern of people skipping the step of godly confirmation or accepting the answer God gave them, which is why we see so many, one of the reasons why we see so many failed relationships, so many mismatched people who don't belong together, and a bad relationship will create more bad relationships because that, that dysfunction will now pour over to the kids. It can pour over to family and friends. It can have a very negative impact on the world, which is why if I'm the devil, I love seeing, not saying I am, but the, the devil would love seeing bad relationships because it has a domino effect. Which is also why I would not, if, if you're the devil, want to see good ones because good ones have the opposite effect. Healthy relationships breed more healthy relationships. They start to have a positive impact, which is why relationships are so important, which is why we have to be very careful about who we set ourselves up with, who we align ourselves with, who we allow into our lives because it can push us in the right direction or the wrong one. So it's important that you understand these things. Now, again, always, if you want to make it easier for you to identify your soulmate, heal. Heal from your past because when you have not healed, you're essentially trying to see this world through broken glasses and you can't see straight. But by healing, you will fix your vision. You will be able to clearly see who is for you, who is not. You will be able to uh, recognize and properly address unhealthy or toxic situations. So it's important that healing is a part of the process. But to do a quick recap, again, you want to make sure you can be yourself with them. You want to make sure that you feel peace for the men or safety for the women. 
and you want godly confirmation. Now, yes, we can go even further and talk about some other pieces to this puzzle, but I do believe those are the three big ones that have to be in place. But if you want more, again, be sure to check out The Man God Has For You. Use the link below or for the men, he who finds a wife. And again, leave your comment below. What do you think is a key to identifying your soulmate? Hey, thank you for watching this video. Be sure to check this one out right here. And I'll see you there. You can put together and it's like, oh yeah, I see exactly where this is going. No, it's going to sometimes be confusing. And again, not confusing because God is confusing you because he is not the author of confusion, but confusing to 